some psychics refer to the frustration of people who have passed when trying to communicate with us mere mortals. Renowned medium John Edwards said that seeing a white bird feather, even a white bird brooch that someone is wearing, reassures him that his mother is around. Spirits of our deceased loved ones have all kinds of ways of making their presence felt, and it makes their quest easier if we can be receptive to those clues around us. According to Mark Pitstick, author, psychologist and holistic chiropractic, these communications have been reported by 25% of Americans, of whom 66% are widows and 75% parents of children who have passed. Some of these stories have been compiled in a book called Hello from Heaven by Judy and Bill Guggenheim, who conclude that messages from our departed loved ones are usually caring and at times life-saving. The communications are made to ease the pain of grieving, reassure the recipient and sometimes warn of danger. They can also come in many different forms, which include visions, dreams, phone calls, phantom touches and even odours. Some examples have been quoted by Gwen Carden in her National Enquirer article. These are called evidential after-death communications, which are when the living person learns from the encounter something they had no way of knowing beforehand. In one account, a college student dreamed of a deceased grandfather, who in the dream urgently shouted, Lock the windows. You're meant to remember to take care of yourself. The young woman awoke and secured her windows, which included locking the one over the fire escape. Later in the night, a man came up the fire escape and broke into another room near hers. A woman reported having an apparition of her father, who reassured her, It's all right now, honey. It's beautiful over here, so don't you worry. With a chuckle, he added, Now I don't have to pay for all that furniture your mum and sister brought. A few minutes later, the woman received a phone call to say that her father had just passed of a heart attack. And soon after that, she was delivered a letter from her mother describing how she and her sister had just stocked out the house with new furniture and dated just before her father's passing. A woman experienced a visit from a deceased male friend who requested her to tell his wife to search for an insurance policy she was unaware of, which was hidden in a cabinet in the bedroom. When his wife looked, sure enough, the policy was there. One woman with a nine-month-old baby awoke one evening to see the figure of a deceased mother standing at the door and appearing worried. The apparition led the woman to the baby's bedroom and beckoned the woman inside, then vanished. The woman rushed to check her baby, realised that she was choking on a piece of plastic and was then able to save her. A California woman heard the disembodied voice of a deceased father urging her to check on her elderly mother's financial circumstances. She soon discovered that her mother was being robbed of thousands by a young neighbour who was forging a signature on blank cheques. Mark Pitstick has shared a story of such a communication provided by one of his clients and was in this case witnessed by a group of people. Ted had been one of his long-term patients and finally succumbed after suffering with lung cancer. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a trusted long-term acquaintance over many years, who described to him her unique shared experience. She had prayed for a sign that her husband was at peace. During the first spring after his burial, a group of family members planted flowers by his final resting place and filmed the activities and surrounding scenery. The moment they arrived at the gravesite, a sparrow flew to Ted's headstone and sat there, turning its head and staring intently at the family. Elizabeth commented that it appeared as if the sparrow was trying to communicate with them, or that maybe Ted's soul was making contact through the bird. During their entire visit, the same sparrow continued to perch and hop on the gravestone while chirping loudly. The family became excited as they filmed the bird, planning to show it to other relatives. However, when they reviewed the footage at home, there was clearly visible the gravesite, grass, trees, family members and flowers, but astonishingly no sparrow. They decided that Elizabeth had been granted her wish and that the anomaly was a sign from Ted. The story also confirms consistent reports that spirit presences 
are difficult to capture on film. Another evidential case was described by Bernie Siegel, MD, in his book Love, Medicine and Miracles. The events concerned a patient called Bill, who was a fellow physician suffering from esophageal cancer. Bill had joined a patient support group, but was reserved and distant in the meetings. Siegel recounted how three months after Bill had passed from his cancer, a young college student attended his office to interview him. She told Siegel that she'd been in a spiritual healing circle the night before, and because the participants knew she was going to see him the next day, the medium who was convening the circle had asked if there was any message for him. She passed him a card, which was inscribed, To Bernie from Bill, with love and peace. If I'd known it was this easy, I'd have brought the package a long time ago, and wouldn't have resisted so much. Siegel was intrigued by the curious note, and called Bill's wife, who said, well, That's what he always told me after support group meetings. He said he would attend, but that he couldn't buy the package. The people in the student's healing circle had no idea who Bill was, and yet he was the exact same phrase that he and his wife used. Love and peace is the closing that Bernie used for all of his letters. The note could have been for no other than Bill, and it was evidence of his attempt to communicate both with his wife and support worker Bernie. Recently, Tierra Cotton Callow of Aberdeen, Maryland, has felt that an ancestor whom she had never met is paying her some attention. Cotton Callow, a business owner, wife and mother, has started studying her family genealogy. She found out that her second great-grandfather, Wiley Henry Edwards, was born to formerly enslaved parents and passed at the age of 78 in 1962. The creator of the Pressing My Way blog and web series said that her encounters with Wiley began relatively unnoticed by her. Late one evening, she was trawling through unindexed military archives online. She heard something fall in the next room, went to investigate, and found nothing. On her return to the computer, Edward's record was sitting there on the screen right in front of her. While gratified, she dismissed this as an intriguing coincidence. She then started pursuing some quite unrelated research. Curious about a copy of a slave pass she had found, Cotton Kello traced his publication to a book. Again, coincidentally, in its pages were several mentions of Edwards, and also the first and only photograph she had found of him. At around the same time, she also suddenly received a photo of Edwards' parents via Facebook. A cousin randomly posted a picture of them, despite assuming that Cotton Kello already had it as the only professional genealogist in the family. Cotton Callow's most touching encounter with Edwards came as a complete shock. She'd accompanied a friend to the cemetery and moved away to give her friend some privacy. As she casually glanced down, she suddenly realised that she was standing directly in front of Edwards' headstone. As she gazed at the familiar name, she pulled up her ancestry app and was stunned to see that the birth and death dates confirmed the match. Screaming, I know him! in the cemetery seemed fairly surreal, but the coincidences had become overwhelming. Sheer chance has led her to locate Edward's last resting place. He was not in a family plot, so there was nothing that would have drawn her to that area. Perhaps just a powerful pull from an intriguing relative who was determined to make himself known to her. Psychic medium Bill Phillips believes that all people possess some psychic intuition that can be developed to enable them to recognise and receive signs from spirits. He suggests first quietly asking the spirits for help when you need it, while having an open heart and mind assists with reading and receiving their attempts at contact. While orbs and light flashes can be used by the deceased to present themselves to us, there are simple everyday events that we can be alert to in detecting a spiritual presence. Unexplained scents and sounds, from a whiff of your late grandfather's tobacco to hearing strange knocking or your name whispered, may be a departed person trying to get your attention. Fluctuating temperatures, particularly icy bursts or localised cold spots, are often felt 
when spirits are nearby. Spirits have also been known to manipulate objects, causing things to go missing, then reappearing, rearranging ornaments, and even causing family portraits to seemingly jump up off the wall. They reputedly seem to be able to access the energy of electronic equipment, causing odd malfunctions such as flickering lights, televisions switching off by themselves, batteries draining from phones, computers being disrupted, light bulbs popping too frequently, and even to the creation of eerie voice recordings on phones and video cameras. Movements and shadowy figures seen from the corner of one's eye may indicate a presence while unusual animal behaviour can also have been harnessed as a sign from a deceased loved one. Dreams are a common way for the departed to reconnect. Sometimes entire conversations can be held with a lost loved one, usually vivid dreams while asleep. There are also countless examples in the world of deceased family members appearing in authenticated photographs. To again quote John Edward, we all leave the world at different times, so it is understandable that our nearest and dearest are trying to find ways to reach back, to reconnect, communicate, and even reassure the bereaved left behind.